for the last 2,500 years. That is, for almost the entire history of the major civilizations. There have been three major spiritual orientations to the world and to our place within it. Let me call them the overcoming of the world, the humanization of the world, and the struggle with the world. Each of them combines a vision of ultimate reality with an approach to existence. The central idea of the overcoming of the world is that the experience of time, change, and distinction is illusory. There is an ultimate unified reality, the divine, the absolute. The phenomena of time, change, and distinction are either unreal or less real than this ultimate being. The greatest example of this orientation is original Buddhism. But it has had many more or less radical expressions in the history of both Eastern and Western philosophy. Our objective, according to the overcoming of the world, should be to establish contact, communion with this ultimate being. And on this basis, seek two orientations to existence. The first orientation is the struggle to achieve serenity to disentangle ourselves from the sufferings brought on by the experience of time and of individuality. In this way, we can participate in the serenity of the impersonal divine. The other major existential implication of this view of the world is the primacy that it gives to an impersonal and universal fellow feeling. By establishing communion with the ultimate and unified reality, we recognize our kinship, not just with our fellow human beings, but with everything in the world. The supreme emotion is therefore a detached and impersonal benevolence. The overcoming of the world is one of the ways we have had to reckon with the threat of nihilism. But it suffers from a contradiction. The most important contradiction is the contradiction between the cognitive and the practical requirements for the combat against nihilism. The overcoming of the world teaches us that the only reliable answer to the threat of nihilism is to place ourselves in the hands of this impersonal and unified reality. By doing so, however, we detach ourselves from the engagements and from the connections that are the true practical antidote to the threat of nihilism. The second major spiritual orientation in the moral history of humanity 
has been the humanization of the world. It begins with the idea that society exists at the edge of an abyss of meaninglessness. Nature is indifferent to our concerns, and we cannot penetrate its ultimate enigmas. Thus, the project of the humanization of the world is, in the first instance, an anti-metaphysical metaphysic. It teaches us that we can create meaning within a meaningless world. We can develop within this indifferent cosmos an order that is constructed according to our own logic. Our best hope of doing so is to organize society according to a logic of roles and of the responsibilities that we have toward one another by virtue of occupying those roles. The rules and rituals of society beat us out of our self-regard. but they are only the necessary rather than the sufficient condition of our conversion to a higher life. They must be supplemented by the cumulative strengthening of our ability to imagine one another, to be mindful of one another's needs, to visit the dark continent that is another self. That is all we can hope to do in the world, to spiritualize this natural darkness and to create a space within it for ourselves. As a response to the threat of nihilism, the humanization of the world suffers from its failure to recognize the fact or the consequences of our infinity, of our longing for the absolute, of our inability to be contained or contented within any limited social or conceptual order. No particular role and no system of roles or of rules and rituals is ever enough for a human being. The roots of a human being lie in the future rather than in the past. And every structure must, in the end, be defied and overcome. The humanization of the world has had as its major historical example the teachings of Confucius. But it lives as an undercurrent in the humanizing despair of our own circumstance. A third major spiritual orientation is the struggle with the world. Its central idea is that we can ascend through a transformation of the self and of society, enveloped or not, within a larger narrative of transactions between God and humanity. We can ascend to eternal life or to a greater life. The struggle with the world has spoken in two voices. It has spoken in the sacred voice of the Semitic religions of salvation, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. It has spoken as well in the profane voice of the modern secular projects of liberation, the political programs 
of democracy, liberalism, and socialism, and the personalist program of romanticism, of self-expression and self-construction. Not only the high romanticism of the 19th century, but the worldwide popular romantic culture of today with its disturbing message that every ordinary man and woman can aspire to a greater life and share in the qualities of the divine.